We're joined now by guests who are also seeing things perking up in the credit market for small business. We have Ruben Daniels. He is the chief client officer for EA Markets, having 18 years experience in corporate finance, working for Barclays, Deutsche Bank and J.P. Morgan, among others. And we have with us a Neuberger Berman portfolio manager, Sandy Pomeroy, managing about $4 billion at her five-star Morningstar rated equity income fund. She sees some opportunities in the stock market right now. Welcome to Taking Stock. Um, uh, first, you, Ruben, I mean, talk about credit right now because credit linked to job creation, companies being able to borrow in order to add more jobs to the payroll. Are you seeing that? Uh, for sure. We are seeing enormous encouraging signs in the capital markets broadly, certainly the equity markets, but also in the credit markets, ranging from the loan markets through to the fixed income issuance markets, secondary markets as well. Uh, the credit markets have been a great and growing place of capital uh, for companies that we work with, mostly large industrial corporates in the U.S. Saying it, what about you? I mean, you take your cues from the stock market. I know it's a discounting mechanism. It's always looking ahead, maybe one quarter. What can we expect? Better earnings as we hear more from corporate America? I think so. I think, generally speaking, the um, economy has been on a slow and steady improvement path here, and we think that that is going to continue. Um, we have festering problems that are out there, though, and those could rear their ugly heads at any point over the next year. But assuming that everything stays pretty calm in terms of the festering problems, you know, the municipal debt crises and the European oh, debt those crises, little things, those right? Yeah, things. municipal <laughs> debt problems, sovereign debt crisis in Europe, uh, trade uh, issues uh, between the United States and overseas markets, uh, as well as the U.S. deficit, right? But absent any of those problems creeping back into the picture, we think actually, you know, confidence is returning. Businesses are beginning to think about hiring again, as we saw in the ADDP report. And then also, um, we think they're going to begin spending a little bit again, as they have more encouraging signs that the sustainability and the growth. All right, so if they're going to be spending again, what are they going to be spending on? Would it be technology, Ruben? Well, I think spending is a broad topic, and there are many places that companies can put money to work today, whether it's in repurchasing their own shares, retiring other parts of their capital structure, or making acquisitions. And I think we're definitely seeing a pickup. But I think Sandy's absolutely right. While we are seeing encouraging signs, it's not clear that all is clear sailing from this point forward. While the markets have definitely been more receptive over the last two years, we're nowhere close to where we were in 2006 and 2007 from a capital availability perspective. And I think we find many of our clients continue to be very concerned about the uncertainty that it lies ahead, whether that's regulatory uncertainty or the availability of capital from the banking institutions in this market. So there still remains quite a bit of uncertainty. And I think a lot of companies are still taking a wait and see approach, more proactive to be sure, but still watching very carefully the markets. Sandy, all right, so you heard the, the possibilities for good things happening in the U.S. economy. Where do you put money to work? How do you make any money in this environment? You know, it's a little trickier because stocks are a little bit more expensive than they were a year ago. And so, you know, finding those absolute cheap values isn't as uh, great as it was, um, you know, just six months or a year ago. But we are still actually finding a lot of good value, particularly overseas. Um, there's a tremendous amount of growth opportunity overseas that still is not being reflected, in our opinion, in valuations. Uh, we think this whole concept of the J curve, where you've got so many uh, of the large population countries hitting that $3,000 of GDP per capita, and that now, why is that so important, $3,000 uh, per capita GDP? Why does that number matter? It matters because if you look back at analogs um, to Japan, to Korea, to Taiwan, other countries that have come through this rapid industrialization process, once they hit that $3,000 of GDP per capita, consumption really begins to take off in a major way. And what you see is you know, more intensity of um, all commodity consumption. You see uh, more services consumed, like travel and leisure, more disposable diapers. <laughs> so you know, it, 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 there is an opportunity as these countries and these populations do reach this sort of tipping point that um, there are many companies that we think stand to benefit that aren't being properly valued in the market. Now, are these companies that are, let's say, based in the United States, but maybe multinationals that have market shares in these domestic economies, or would you favor companies that have a more domestic focus because they're based in places like China, like India, Indonesia, Brazil, and so on? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, and we see 
opportunities both places, quite honestly. But we're always very valuation sensitive, and the most important thing from our perspective is that we never want to pay too much for growth or too much for earnings. And so what we do is we look at a company and we say, okay, if Unilever's got a great opportunity to capture big market share in Indonesia, in India, in Southeast Asia, that's as interesting to us as a company that could be headquartered in Indonesia or in India that's substantially higher valuation. Does so it we, also mean that you've got issues having to do with accounting and understanding exactly what the company does because yeah. it's more comfortable if you can actually speak the language of the company? Yes, the, the language is less of an issue. The you know the, all the filings are in English typically, and mostly they're audited financials. We only look at companies that have audited financials by reputable auditing firms. So, but th there is a little bit of that uh, extra work that you have to do. But you're often rewarded for it if you can find the right company. Ruben, I'm glad that uh, Sandy mentioned the word audited because it seems as though we've gone through a credit cycle where just about anybody could get a loan, whether it was a subprime mortgage or indeed it was a company uh, with a very low credit rating because you had very light covenants in many loans, which may account for the fact that we have not had that many official bankruptcies. Do you see that that's going to change? Are whatever new loans come down the pipe, are they going to be much more strict? I think we're seeing banks being far more discerning in the credit that they provide to their clients. What I like about what Sandy said as well is this idea of working hard. I think what we see amongst our clients is that there is capital available. We have seen money, flunt, money fund inflows. We have seen banks lending and bond markets being accessible and equity markets uh, booming effectively relative to where we've been. Is this for small and mid-sized companies or just across, for big companies? Across the curve, small, mid-sized uh, to the Fortune 10, we see an enormous amount of capital available. The difference between today and where we were two or three years ago is that companies need to work harder to access that capital. Banks are more constrained from a regulatory perspective. There's been a lot more bank consolidation, a lot more concentration of power amongst the banks. And what we see companies doing, particularly the sophisticated and successful ones, is they're being very proactive. They're getting ahead of their upcoming maturities. They're refinancing early. They're negotiating with their banks earlier. They're looking for alternative sources of capital. And so they're all working harder to take advantage of what capital is available. But it's not like it was in 2006 and 2007 when, com when financial institutions were throwing money at companies uh, without as much discretion or discrimination as they are applying now. Sandy, do we have a little bit of a contradiction at work here that we've got a cyclical recovery, but that there are some structural issues, and they might be the sort of uh, time bombs that are ticking, that there are structural issues out there, whether it be the deficit, Social Security, health care reform is going to be redebated uh, in the House. Are there structural issues? versus cyclical recovery and then that what makes it a little bit more difficult for investors? I think that's a, a good point but I also think you can't underestimate a, a good cycle because you know if companies can have a good long economic cycle with which they can generate lots of revenue, lots of profit, lots of free cash, you can begin to solve many of the issues that Ruben's talking about. So um, don't don't, the, don't, uh, don't stare a, a good cycle in the, in, in yes, the face. Let's just hope the duration is very long and um, you know I think that the best thing would be is if we do see a little bit more momentum to it because I think the more momentum we have that's when you're going to see the job hiring when you're going to see the the actual capital spending which will become more self-sustaining well, it seems as though also maybe we could describe this as the Facebook cycle, right? Because later on today uh, on Bloomberg at 9 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be having a special Facebook, the $50 billion question. Here's a company that's still private, doesn't necessarily have a big commercial business model yet, has 500 million subscribers, and yet maybe a $50 billion market value. Sandy, do you use Facebook? You know, I'm probably one of the only people who doesn't use it. I'm sort of an old fogey when it comes to technology. So they're going to be looking for the 501 million I'll, that they come I after you. I think that when I, when I join it, it's probably all over. So. Oh, all right. So you'll be the, you'll be the bear. Ruben, what about you? Do you use no Facebook? Fear. I have not yet used Facebook. You haven't I used have Facebook. We got two. You must be the only two people on the planet. We may be. We may be. What I like about what Facebook is doing is identifying alternative sources of capital. I think that they probably had a variety of different alternatives as it related to financing and the equity markets, given the tone today and the excitement about social networking. I think their approach in looking for alternative forms and sources of capital is relatively unique, and I think we'll pay dividends to them. All right, we got to leave it there. Thank you very much, Ruben Daniels, Sandy Pomeroy.